Okay, so um, this is really common. By the way, most of you, not probably a third of you, have this device on board or a device like it. It's a battery combiner. They're either battery combiners, voltage sense relays, uh, echo charge, but you're probably going to have this device on board. <clears throat> Even if it's a new boat, 15-year-old boat, or it's a boat that's been modified. If the boat has worked any electrical done within the last 15 years, it's probable that someone put one of these devices on board your boat. The big issue with this failing, and I've never seen one fail, ever, so this device will, I mean, if it does fail, I haven't seen one, and I've literally installed thousands, and I've, we work on a lot of boats. The only problem with this device is the fuse. This fuse here and this fuse here will blow unintentionally because of unintended consequences of putting batteries in parallel that are unevenly discharged. It doesn't mean that it's a problem with the combiner. It doesn't mean it's a problem with the system. It's just, it actually happens. So unfortunately, when you have a combiner on your boat, these fuses should be on a list of things to check regularly. You should. You have to, because they're going to blow, and one of them will blow. And when that happens, especially if you have, for example, a thruster battery combined to it, and remember, a lot of people that install new batteries, because thrusters generally don't get installed in the yard, like at the factory, they get installed commission later. People don't care about voltmeters because they're not electricians. They're other, they're other trades. So very few people are putting voltmeters on battery thruster batteries. So you're assuming they get the charge, but you don't know. You never know, unless you go down there. Nobody does because it's in the bowel of the boat up front under a cabin that you have to literally hang over a bed inside, take the, nobody goes. And you're assuming it's getting a charge through your combiner. But if the combiner blow, fuse blows, this battery doesn't. And that might be an AD, it might be two AGM, two group 31s. And if it doesn't get a charge for five, six months, those batteries are gone. So either you put a voltmeter on this so you know it's getting a charge, which ideally you should or you constantly check that fuse to make sure that it doesn't blow and you have to see both this circuit and this circuit right here. This will not blow. It just won't. Never seen it. It can, but never has in my experience. So that's, and this battery combiner, the purpose of that device is to allow either, and notice the arrows, is to allow either the engine battery recharge the house battery or allow what is happening at the house battery recharge the engine battery. So it's a bi-directional device. It's a device that allows current in either direction. It's truly like a pipe. You put a pipe in the ground, water can flow one way or it can flow the other way. Pipes don't let, don't stop water unless there's a gate valve, right? And that would be a diode electrically. So it's a strict, a real pipe in between A and B. And the only time this works is if there is what's called a charging voltage. And we talked about that yesterday. So the batteries will only ever be combined if the charging voltage gets above 13.3 volts on a 12 volt system. Question. Um, if your uh, fuses are blowing, can't you just use bigger fuses, bigger wires? Well, the problem is this is rated for a maximum ampacity. You could, but this is a 120 amp device. So if you're getting to too big a fuse, then you need to change that combiner. That combiner then goes up to 300 amps. I've seen thruster battery bags draw because the owner is not using a light touch on the thruster where once the battery bank on the thruster is so low and this house bank is big enough, right, this battery bank must be much bigger, the current flowing from the house to the thruster bank whenever the engines are running is, I've seen over four or 500 amps come on this wire. It's, it's all hands on deck. It's, the batteries are so uneven, one battery is at 10 volts, nine volts running the thruster right, completely being drained, and the house battery's at 14, it's a dam. I mean, it's the difference, the delta between the two battery banks is so great that it's just a flood, flood, and there's, the fuses blow. One way to bypass that is there's a post here, a starter isolated post where we've actually wired that, and whenever the thrusters engage, the parallel doesn't work. So the thruster's on its own when it's working, and as soon as it stops working, then we'll put them in combined for a charge. So this is kind of crafty, you know? But your boat's not gonna have that. There's just no way. I mean, this is sort of like, like that's super geek. Nobody does that. Like, I mean, it does, of course. If you maybe have a Riviera or a Fleming 
or a San Juan, where basically engineering department runs the company and the accountants are in the back and the engineers do whatever they want and the price is the price, then yeah, you'll have something like that. But on a normal boat where people have to make actually real decisions based on money, nobody's gonna do that, nobody. They just won't, they just can't afford to. It's too expensive to do everything to perfection. So battery combiners, look at the fuse. Look at the fuse. If you have one, you probably do. Look for VSR, look for an echo charge, look for an ACR. Honestly, you'll be surprised at how many of those fuses blow. It's, that's the problem with this device, is that when the batteries are uneven, you can't limit the current going through them. Any questions on battery combiners?